Hey guys, how the hell are you? I'm coming at you from vacation. Right now, today, I am at Klingman's Dome, which we are disputing where exactly it is. It could potentially be in North Carolina, could potentially be in Tennessee, because we seem to be having an argument about it in the car. Right, guys? Anyways, so yeah, I decided, hell, let's uh, go ahead and shoot an IFAG video from here while I'm on vacation. So, first question, why do you get rid of the 10 string? Well, dude, it was too goddamn much. Arnold plays guitar. Have you ever played a PV Ultra Plus? Oh, yes, I have. Had one like 12 years ago and just picked up another one for 325 bucks. I would definitely look into getting one. Very, very underrated amp. Dude, I totally know it was my first tube amp that I ever had. I had a half stack that was the PV Ultra Plus on top and then the PV Ultra cab on bottom. I loved that amp. I wish I never would have sold it. I sold it because I needed funds for a backup instrument. And I'm sorry, let me just get this view in here. I sold it because I desperately needed a backup instrument to go on tour with at the time. And it was one of those things I deeply, deeply regretted ever since. However, I just picked up one finally. So, yep, an Ultra Plus has come back into my possession. There will be some videos coming in the very near future, especially after I get some new tubes in it. Thanks for doing these. Do you have any opinions on Abasi guitars? Yes, I do. I had a nightmare with a clothing company. Typical. On a separate matter, an IFAC question for you, good sir. Have you noticed a difference in viewership, etc., since pandemic hit and you've been putting out more content? P.S. Huge longtime fan and subscriber. Thank you so much, good sir. I appreciate you. So, I've not really noticed a huge change in my viewership because, honestly, since pandemic hit, a lot of the content I've been putting out has been IFAC videos as well as, like like those NAM compilations that I did. So not really so much of the unbiased gear reviews like I used to do a lot of. Don't get me wrong, I still want that to be kind of a focus of this channel, but I've been putting out a lot more stuff like this where I'm just kind of talking to you guys, waxing eloquent about this and that, and just kind of sharing my opinions on a variety of topics, not just a certain piece of gear. And that's not necessarily something that gets a huge amount of viewership compared to the gear demos and the gear reviews. So let's pause to enjoy the view. I really like the vibe of your FAQs. Any words on ESP guitars? Yes, I quite like them. I think that they have rather consistent QC, and that goes not just for stuff from any of the custom shops, but also the E2 line, the LTD line. Pretty much everything that they do has some sort of consistent level of quality control that lends them to being really, really excellent instruments for the money. I highly doubt it, but I wonder if you're into genty techy style metalcore. Stuff like Architects, Era, Veil of Maya, Born of Osiris, etc. Love the videos. Oh, you mean backing track core. Yeah, I actually do like a lot of that stuff. I think that some stuff is much better than other stuff. Like, I really like Architects. Um, I love seeing them live, too. I like Born of Osiris a lot. I like Veil of Maya, but not my favorite compared to some of the other stuff. Era, I can't stand. I don't really find anything enjoyable from them, to be honest with you. But honestly, I kind of really dig that style, but I've got to be really... Like, something really has to grab me about that particular band or a particular song or album for me to really go crazy for it. Great vid as always. IFAC, thoughts on mainstream quote-unquote sellout bands like Slipknot, Metallica, etc. 
So I don't really think of them as sellout bands. What I think of them as is gateway bands. It's the kind of stuff that you get into and then all of a sudden your curiosity is peaked and you want to check out a whole bunch of other stuff along those same lines or maybe you want to start going down the rabbit hole a little bit. For instance, my first real like heavy band that I got into was Metallica. And by getting into Metallica, I then started to explore Megadeth and Slayer and Pantera and Anthrax and all those bands kind of that were of the same ilk, really, really heavy, kind of thrashy. Um, Slipknot is another great band. I mean, when that band first came out, they used to wax eloquent in various interviews about how much they're inspired by various death metal groups. So, like, you would be reading an interview with Joey Dorson, and he'd be talking about how much he loves Carcass and Malevolent Creation. And I think that's the purpose of bands like that. It's stuff that a lot of people can get into very quickly, very easily. And by getting into bands like that, hopefully it opens up your eyes and opens up your ears to a bunch of other stuff in the process. One of the things that a lot of people have to remember, too, is that all of us metalheads that really like the extreme and underground stuff, we didn't start off this way. No one comes out of the fucking womb listening to Gate Creeper or anything like that. We all started off somewhere with some band that kind of grabbed our attention, and all of a sudden, we started listening to this shit and diving deep. And... You know, that's why I would never, ever fault somebody for being into the quote-unquote sellout bands or the mainstream rock or the new metal or the metalcore or anything that a lot of gatekeepers don't necessarily consider to be true. It's all stuff that could lead to something else down the road. And a little bit on the same note... I got a burning IFAC that's probably been bashed from hell and back by the pricks in guitar forums. What are your thoughts on bands like Five Finger Death Punch? While I understand a lot of their stuff can sound the same, I still think Ivan's vocals are fucking sick and would love to have a voice like his. So I do think that Ivan's vocals are sick, and that's the reason why I loved Motograder back in the day. Five Finger Death Punch is not exactly my favorite band at all because of the music they're in, but it's another gateway band. It's another one of those bands that someone can get into, and that can be the thing that is like the catalyst for them discovering a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's why I think that there's still a place for that band even. Hey dude, what's the most you paid for a beer and was it worth it? Ooh, very good question. The most that I have paid for a beer, for a single bottle of beer, was $59.99. And that was a beer called Homage by Three Fontainen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a lambic, so it's a sour. It was extremely fruity. It was extremely tart. But man, did it have a rich flavor to it. It was very, very good. That being said, would I say that it was worth it? Honestly, in that particular case, no. And that's because I'm not the biggest fan of sours. My wife is more of a fan of sours than I am, but even she's kind of grown past it a little bit. I'm much more into stouts, really, really heavy ales. Um, really been into Hell's Lagers lately, Box, that sort of stuff. Ales of most sorts, really. So, like, a sour like that, that Lambic that I had, not the best use of my funds in hindsight. However, I do have some stuff that I've paid about 50 bucks a bottle for that are like really hard to get stouts and barley wines and those have been well worth every penny in my opinion. IFAC, would you rather go amp sim like a Neural or Kemper for bedroom only playing? Mostly with headphones. Lots of different types of distortion and some clean, crunchier sounds. Thanks. I would rather go with an amp sim on maybe like a laptop or something. Something like 
uh, the neural Pliny, for example, or actually the neural archetype Nolly. That one is pretty much the most all-encompassing one that they have, including with a bunch of effects and stuff too, if you want. So I would go with that. Plus it's a hell of a lot cheaper than getting a Kemper. Don't get me wrong, Kemper's awesome, but if that's all you're gonna use it for is bedroom only playing, you want the amp sim, because that's gonna get you the most realistic tones for the least amount of money. Hey Arnold, what's your favorite Evergrey album? Oh dude, for sure it's Hymns for the Broken. I love everything that Evergrey has put out. I really, really do. But Hymns for the Broken holds a special place in my heart because it's the first album that they did after Jonas and Henrik came back to the band. And in addition to that, I think it's some of their strongest songwriting. I mean, there's not a single bad song on that record. It's super heavy. There's an incredible vibe throughout that whole thing. It's not just the tones and the riff writing that's heavy. It's the vibe that kind of carries throughout the whole thing. I just, man, I fucking love that record. Like, it, it, it's, it's just incredible. I'm at a loss for words by how good it is. And now it's time for this week's Troll of the Week. And we are back in the car on the way back to the place where we're staying because, quite frankly, motherfucker, you don't deserve the nice views. All right. Blutzigen87 writes... Oh, well, first, before I say what he writes, let me read off a great response that one of my other subs, Lucas, posted. Have fun being on Troll of the Week next, IFAQ. So, Blutzigen87 writes... This is like watching some fat American Ola England copy. Wow, fat American Ola England copy. Okay, well this is like reading a comment from some fucking Nazi prick who just happens to be trolling in my comments section. So I gotta say, man, it's uh, kind of impressive that you found just enough time to actually pop your little mushroom cap out of your sister uh, long enough to type that comment out. You Nazi fucking cunt. Get off my channel. Don't show up here ever again, you little racist prick. And that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to another IFAC video. This was kind of cool to do this while I'm uh, here on vacation and just kind of enjoying myself, getting away from it all. So thank you so much. Same bad time, same bad channel next week. And remember, uh, click that subscribe button, leave your comment in the comment section below, like this video. There's lots more metal guitar oriented content to come and remember to please take what you do seriously, but do not take yourself seriously.